Thank you very much. But what do you want me to do again? <laughs> <laughs> you are you are playing the host, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now. Yeah. So before I invite him to you know take part in the conversation and share his experience with us this evening, um, I'd like first to share the other half of him now. Huh. So I was born in Ipoh town. Ipoh also. <laughs> Hey, Batu Gajah. Batu Gajah. <laughs> and surprisingly, uh, my husband was born in the same town as well, uh. the same month, but a year apart. Uh. I was born in the 1970s, as you can see, I'm young spring chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Still springy. Serious. I love animals, and my husband, my, my father, was a veterinarian. He passed on at the ripe, ripe old age of 91 last year, and I've learned a lot of lot of good things from him, a lot of values, and maybe that's why I feel I've got this closeness with animals. I feel I can talk to them, I can look at them in the eye, and I can converse with them, and an animal can come strangely walking up to me without knowing me, and we can have a connection. And I can talk to them because when I stop talking to them, they'll respond to me in a very peculiar manner. They can actually talk to me. A cat might heal and say, and say, hello, baby, how are you doing today? Mm -hmm. And then it's not just a meow, it's a meow. It's like responding to me. And if I say something else, they'll use in a different tone. So I know you're talking to me. I know I can converse with them. And it's a very, very special gift, and I feel gifted to have that. But because of this but, gift, but because, because I feel this connection with animals, I feel sometimes compelled to try to save every animal I see on the street, which is sometimes difficult for me because I don't know where to draw the line. Ah. I feel if there's a stray dog there, what can I do to, take, to, to find a home for it? Give it some food. And this same thing happened to me in Sungai Buno Hospital where I, I work. One day there was a stray dog in the car park. And we realized, turns out, um, excuse me, Ambika and me were in the car park. And we saw this little dog had a puppy. It was the cutest little puppy. It was round and fluffy. And it was shuffling its feet around and squealing after the mother. So we decided, let's try to feed the puppy. And when we came back in the afternoon to our this little puppy had been slashed with a knife. Hmm? Oh. There was a big gashing wound on its back. How sad we felt that day. We couldn't help it, but we rescued the puppy and put it in a box. And we went back into the building to try to give help to the guards <coughs> again. When we came back, the puppy was gone. We were extremely sad at this. And we looked at the mother dog, and she was in a straight, in a straight in the frenzy state, she was running around looking for her puppy. By then, the RSPCC had just drove into the car park. So we waited and we told them, you know what, the puppy that we called your boy disappeared. We don't know what happened to the puppy. But we said, you know what, if you want to rescue this dog here, let me take her away. We said, okay, you can take the dog away, but what happened to the dog? She said, well, I'll take the dog away to the RSPCC. Unfortunately, all older dogs will be put to sleep. When I heard that, there were tears streaming down my cheek. I said, no, you're not taking that dog. No, you're not taking that dog away. And 
and um, there was two of us there, and we were just crying and you know trying to save the dolls, and he didn't know how to handle it. So I told him, is there any way you can place this dog in a home? Just for a few days, so I can buy some time to find a home for the dog. He said, okay, if you can pay me $80 a day, I'll take the dog and look after it for 10 days. I grabbed the money out of my pocket, here you are, I said, take the money, look after the dog, I'll find a home for the dog. And sure enough, I found a home for the dog in 10 days, mm -hmm. and the dog is now happy in my auntie's house. And she had pups again after that, but fortunately they're all free. So apart from loving animals and having a passion for animals, I love fish. That's another passion of mine. And it's always been my dream to own a bakery one day. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> when I do open it, I should invite all of you to come <laughs> and help feast in my bakery. So that actually passion actually started about two years ago when I got a beautiful encyclopedia mm -hmm. of bread and mm -hmm. bread making. Mm -hmm.